So according to our guy Ian Begley, Al, when asked about Julius Randle and the future with the Knicks, Ian says Julius is ready to accept any role that is asked of him on this Knicks team if it leads to winning. Uh, he says Randall has been excited about this Knicks team, believes they can make a run, and he's looking forward to being back healthy with this group and thinks that things can be special with the acquisition of Mikhail Bridges. He wants to win and win in New York. He was a bit frustrated by, you know, the, the ridiculous rumors about the jersey selling and all of that. But bottom line is he's bought in, he's locked in, and he's ready to do whatever it takes to win, man. So give me, give me your thoughts on that, bro. I mean, that's what you want to hear, man. That's what you want to hear from... Look, you're number two guy on this team, okay? It's Brunson, number one. We know it's Brunson's team. He's got the C on his chest now. He's a captain. He's designated that spot. Julius Randle is right up there with the importance to this team. Look, we saw it in the postseason. Not having another guy who's a, consist a consistent score. Another guy who can play make for this team, okay? Another solid rebounder, right? He offers a lot to this team. So seeing that he's willing to do anything to win at this point is just it's music to any fan's ears, right? And I think for a guy like him who's had lackluster postseason success, I think you just have to buy into what this team is doing right now, seeing how it's being formulated, and just whatever role Tibbs gives you, whether it be playing the five, hopefully, whether just being a guy who can score and just grab rebounds and not ask to be doing too much because you got the depth on this team now, right? We don't have to have him guard like the best power forward or best big on the opposing team. That's why we got OG, and that's why we got Bridges now. All right? So... For him to say he'll do anything necessary to make sure that this team is a winner, that's what you want to hear, man. And for him, I think you have to accept that and just go into the role of saying, this is Brunson's team, all right? So we see how this team's moving. Every decision that they made, you want to talk about getting the last infinity stone, as you say, <laughs> for the New York Knicks and Mikhail Bridges, why are they doing that? Not only because he's a talented player, but that's Brunson's boy right there, right? They got all Brunson's boys on this team. All right, between Dante, Bridges, Josh Hart, they're all here. All right, everything they've been doing is saying that it's moving towards Brunson. That doesn't mean they're forgetting about Julius. All right, that's not what this is saying. However, there's a pecking order to how this team is moving. And yeah. I think if you're Julius at this point, not only are you a critical part of this team, but you're just, unfortunate. you're not Brunson. And it's not unfortunate. You're just not yeah. Brunson. And it's not where you looked at it at this point. So, He's going to be that second scoring option. We need him to do that, and we need him to be that solid rebounder because, look, man, the way that the, the East is compiled between Biggs and Philly, you will get the Bucks, Boston. You, you got to control the glass if you want to win games. Yeah, and, and that's one thing that he's done consistently since he's been with the Knicks is go out there and grab boards, and I, I think that is important, uh, especially when this team is, has lost Hartenstein. And so uh, it's going to be very important for Julius to, to go out there and maintain that. But I think regardless of the position that he plays, whether it's his natural position at the four or he does get some time at the five, I just want to see him locked in. Like he said, he's going to be locked in, ready to do whatever it is to takes to win. And for me, start on the defensive side. You know, be locked in. You don't want to have those defensive lapses where you're losing your man or, you know, guys running back door on your paws and, you know what I mean, things of that nature. Like, be locked in on the defensive side for 48 minutes. And then offensively, just be who, just be who you are, the 25-10 and 10 beast. It, like you said, he doesn't have to necessarily get that 25, but I just mean the mindset because he still has to be an engine for this team, just like Jalen still has to be an engine for this team. And yes, some of those guys, one of those or two of those guys are going to have to dial it back on some nights and sacrifice for the betterment of the team. But you still want to have that aggressive mentality. You still want to be able to be that guy who's going to draw those double teams, create for others, being able to attack that basket, bully ball Randall. Let's see how he is with the shoulder, right? Mentally and physically. How does he bounce back from that recovery from the shoulder surgery? It's been a while since he played. So, you know, let's see how he gets into the groove. But ultimately, he still needs to maintain that aggressiveness and just be healthy at the right time for these guys to make their run in the playoffs. And look, CP, I mean, we talk about this guy being, you know, the guy who can grab boards and score, but he's also the second best playmaker on this team, too. OK, so let's also keep it a bean when we talk about that. That's why, look, <clears throat> we got to start with the disrespect to Randall. I get that people are out there like cat, whoever. Please stop. This guy yeah. is, is, we're talking about a three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA player. I get that he has underperformed in the postseason. But when we were looking at how this team is created, right, Julius is as much of a, as a, as a needed playmaker as Brunson. 
you look at the stats, 6.7 assists were completed by Brunson last year, right? Right behind him, five by Julius. And look, after we got OG, those numbers started to go up. You saw some six, seven, and eight assists out there, and it's just easier for him when you have guys that are capable of knocking down shots, guys who are cutting. So for him, having a team like this where you now insert Bridges and you're going to have Dante, Bridges, OG, Brunson, guys that can knock down threes left and right, you're going to see those assist numbers start to tick up, especially if he plays the five because you got to kick out from the paint Someone's most likely going to knock it down because we're talking about guys who are at least a 37, 38% knockdown three point shooter, right? So let's also keep in mind that he's going to be that facilitator that we're also lacking in the postseason, too. So Julius is a critical factor. And I got confidence, man. I thought last year he was going to show it in the postseason. Obviously, he gets hurt. I still got confidence, especially with how this team is constructed. And that's why I'm kind of more bullish this year, man, why I'm so excited is because I think this is going to be that year we see Randall actually have success in the postseason. Yeah, I'd love to see it, man. The the Julius Redemption story is the final chapter of the book. It would be nice to see him uh, come into the postseason with his team and and really deliver because this will be the best team that he has played for since he's gotten here on the Knicks. Now, let's talk about him potentially at the five here because behind Mitch – I do still think that Tibbs will go to Precious first at mm. the backup five. There not, will even, be... not even Sims. Hold on. Not even Sims. Because we no. know like there's been reports that Sims, that's Tibbs' guy right there. I don't know. No. I think he goes Precious All first. Right. I think Pre- Precious goes first on the nights where the matchup suits him. You know, the nights when they play Denver or the, or the nights where they play Philadelphia or even Milwaukee, like that might not be his night. When, when, when mm-hmm. he just has you know, more physically imposing bigs against him. But certain nights, like pl- playing Boston, he should be fine. He playing Indiana, I think he should be okay. Like I think there's going to be a lot of nights where pressures will be adequate at the, at the five defensively. He will be switchable. He will be versatile for them. But let's say, because right now, as, as of last month, Mitchell Robinson wasn't even cleared for full contact. So let's say, you know, God forbid, it takes Mitch a little bit of time to to get going and you're just left with Precious and maybe Sims. And hopefully Sims does come around. Like, he's, he's training hard in the offseason. He's training hard on his offense. But do you see them going to Randall at the five, man? What do you think about that prospect? I, I hope so, man. I mean, I in the past, we know why it wasn't happening because we wanted to see what Obi, we wanted to see what Randall out there put Randall at the five. But... Tibbs didn't believe in Obi's offense enough just as an individual score to have that happen. And we all know Tibbs is going to think about defense first, right? But in this case, with your best defense is your offense with Julius at the five, meaning if you got to keep up with the guys that are knocking down shots, I think you can then say, all right, we don't need to be so strict as to having a rim protector as we once did because we didn't have enough shooting, right? I would like to see Julius at the five. I I don't know if Tibbs is still going to do that. Yeah. Tibbs impressed me last season with how he was just able to, on the fly, middle of the season, you lose Randy, you lose all these guys. And we saw the offensive creativity of how fast that ball was moving around, right, and getting guys open looks. Mm-hmm. Part of me wants to have that confidence that Tibbs is going to look at this roster and say, you know what? We can be a little bit more flexible now. We, we can put Randall at the five because why not have four of our best shooters on the court at once? Why not? And then when you have somebody like OG Ananobi out there, man, like, come on, on some nights, he can guard the five. We know he can guard one through four easily. And if we're thinking about second units, and this is really the time to shine with Randall at the five. Like, if you're going against second units, why not have Randall at the five? You're, not every team has a true five. We, we had that luxury last year having yeah. two seven-footers. We were the anomaly. We weren't the standard. So when you think about having Precious, like Randall is around the same height as Precious. That's usually what most teams have out there. So, yeah, we're going to see Precious, but I would love to see Randall at the five, especially with the offense that we're going to have now. I don't I don't think there's really an excuse not to see it this season. As I said, I think your best defense is now your offense because, once again, if you have guys who are knocking down threes at 30, 37% clip, like – it's that it's that new age of offense in the NBA where try to keep up, man. Try to keep yeah. up with our potent shooting. 
Yeah, good points. Good, good points, man. And salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you, boys. CP and Alex, we are cooking on this Friday afternoon matinee edition stream. Uh, YouTube, salute. Bleacher Report, salute. Facebook, salute. I see my guy Ty Clemens in the chat. Alex Flowers, my franchise channel members on the YouTube side. Go ahead and leave us an emoji. Let us know that you guys are in here. The phone lines are up, man. You guys want to tap in on this center rotation conversation. 657-383-1509 is the number to call. Or you can hit us up on the K. KFTV Discord. I think with Tibbs, desperate times will call for desperate measures with him. That's why I'm not so sure that off the rip they will go there with Julius. I think, you know, in in a best case scenario, you have Mitch out there and then you have Precious out there. But let's say Mitch does go down or you do lose Precious, I think that's when it might may force Tibbs' hand to get a bit more creative out there, just like he did with the with the Philly series and putting and an OB, and at times Precious out there on MB, like he he had to do that. But I know that you know their concerns with Julius is uh, twofold: the rim protection ability, and also his ability as a role man in the in the pick and roll game, in the screen game. I think those are two things where, as he talks about doing whatever it takes to win, those are two areas where they're gonna want to see him improve to really be sustainable at that five spot. And then if they do go small there, is it? And OG Manning more fives than Julius, where he's still kind of the four. But you got OG out there. You get Bridges. Maybe you get Hart, DiVincenzo, Brunson. You know, you, you get a rotation like that out there. I think that's that, that would be very interesting to see. I just want to see some lineup creativity, CP. Shout out to our guy, J.D., who's, who coined the term uh, template coaching, as we know, Years past, right? Or yeah. not not too far, but like when we had quick RJ on the team, like you knew what the starting file would be, you know what the bench unit would look like. You could get down to you could get so granular down to like the five minute, twenty-three second mark that you knew who was coming in and what was gonna happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We need to move a little bit past that now. We need to be a little bit more open to what this team could potentially be. You know, we gotta look at what Brad Stevens would do. You gotta look at what Steve Kerr would do would do with yeah. his team, right? You gotta look at what other teams are doing we we could potentially have our own death lineup i get that you're talking about the concern of randall being a role man and a screen setter but as we know from when we've talked to john krasinski you know we know even talking to fred talking to fred katz like the there's not a lot of practices that go around in the nba right yeah. and especially with tibbs now because you want these guys fresh you don't want to overburden them you don't want to put the taxing on their bodies so what better time to get that practice than the regular season you know, if you want Julius to be a better screen role, screen setter and a role man, you do it during the regular season. Choose your matchups, right? You're yeah. going to have enough times against the Washington Wizards, Washington Generals, whatever they should be called at that point. Uh, you're going to have all these opportunities. <laughs> so yeah. just 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 get the just figure it out, man. You're going to like he did it. This is what I'm saying like he did it last season on the fly when you lose Randall, right? Yeah. When you lose OG. Just do it again, man. I don't think we need to we don't need to see this team be so strict with how this roster is constructed right now. True indeed, true indeed, man. Now let's get to a little uh, worst take, shall we, Al? This this was a submission. Uh, I don't recall the fan who submitted this, but this was from uh, ESPN and their NBA Today show. Shout out to our guy. Um, hang on one second. I, I had the uh, wrong thing up there. Shout out to our guy, Big Perk, the governor, who represents us quite well on that show. So this was uh, NBA Today their take on Julius and his situation with the Knicks. Let's listen to it, and then I'll have you react to it. Here we go. Mm. Hurt. He was essentially the number two option for these New York Knicks, and now they have brought in the full Nova Knicks, right? They have OG Ananobi, Mitchell Robinson is back. Trying to figure all of that out, Shanae, is going to be a challenge. Well, we're all players here, and as much as we are playing a team sport, we understand it's important to be humble. The hardest position is watching your team succeed without you. Mm. That's very difficult to process, and I do think that he is a huge catalyst for them to move forward, but he's going to have to figure out where he fits in. That's something that he probably never thought or understood, Richard. Yeah, but when you look at OG Ananobi, he's not a go-get-you-a-bucket guy. You go to Mikael Bridges, he's not a go-get-you-a-bucket guy. They got two guys that can create for others and themselves. That's their two best players. But one of them is going to have to take a lesser role, and that's what we're going to see if Julius Randle can do. And the strength for Julius Randle is that he's a hybrid. Even though he's not as tall as the centers, he can really score, he can attack downhill. So I do think he can fill the gaps losing Hardenstein. What do you think there, Al? Good take, worst take, what do you think? I think they're underplaying. I think there's a lot that goes. <laughs> there's a lot 
to digest out of that entire dialogue. I just want to say, like, with regards to talking about guys who can't create their own, I mean, I just don't agree with the Macau Bridges and the OG Ananobi stuff because, one, we just watched OG this past postseason where he showed a little bit of offensive creativity. Is it as reliable? No, but I think you got to be encouraged with what you saw. Mikhail Bridges was essentially that guy out in Brooklyn, all right? And we saw him being able to thrive in that type of situation. I say that's terrible to even give that type of analysis because you're not paying attention to what these guys did individually, either on the Knicks or in their previous stops. And I think on any given night, Bridges could even rise to being that number two option. Like, he could go, he could catch fire, create for himself. Is he that guy, like, that you want to have doing that on a night-to-night basis? No, but he's going to have those nights. I just don't agree with that. With regards to Randall, mm-hmm. I don't even think that he has – It's, I think they're just downplaying what, how much of a sacrifice he has to make at this point. And, and I, I kind of just don't agree with that because mm-hmm. he's still going to have to be that second guy on this team, like to, to score, as we already talked about, rebound, be that playmaker. Just because we saw what Brunson did last year without Randall doesn't necessarily mean you want – Brunson to be shouldering that type of workload again. Yeah. So I don't agree with any any of those things that they've said. I think it's a is it the worst take? I'm going to say it is the worst take, CP, mm. because I just don't think that you need to go to that extreme. I think you can be a little more holistic, a little bit more like nuanced in the analysis of how this team is constructed yeah. and how they could move forward. I I don't think uh, RJ was so far off, I and mean, he is a notorious Nick hater. But I, I think the point that he was trying to make was that. You don't want to rely on those other guys as much as you do Julius, right? He is an all-star for a reason, right? Like, yep. I, I I think, yes, McCal could be trusted to get that for you and OG as well. But but Julius, that, that's that been his his role forever. You know what I mean? And so I, I think that's what, what Jefferson means is, like, that's the guy that you really need to be an engine for them. But it will be interesting to see who takes a step back a little bit. Because it is an extra, especially with Mikhail Bridges, that is more usage. That is an extra guy that 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 does want the rock. He he wants to 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 get the rock in his hand to and score and make things happen. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they play it out. Because yeah, for all the locker room chemistry that they have, they still got to get it done on the court. And just like you said, I I don't think they because I was asked this question on um on NBA radio yesterday. I was on Rick Hamler and uh, Antonio Daniels, and they were asking, they were like, well, can Brunson finish in the top five this year in MVP? And I was like, well, he may not need to. It's almost like that Tatum situation where he may not have to be everything for this team for them to succeed. And maybe it does dial down the numbers a little bit for both him and Julius, where, you know, on any given night, it could be a guy's night. Maybe it's OG's night one night. Maybe it's McCow's night one night. Maybe it's Josh Hart getting you a triple-double off the bench one night. Who knows? You, you know what I mean? So it could be a For situation sure. like that. For sure. And look, I, I, shout, out to, shout out to my guy, JJ, fellow yeah. Jets fan. Uh, look, I saw, like, yes. I did, No, I'm not saying that Bridges thrived in Brooklyn. Yeah. What I'm saying, though, is based on the experience that he got out there and what we saw from him, is that he can create for himself. I think it's a little much of an overstatement saying that he can't do it rather than, you know, he's not the most, is he the most efficient? Is he that guy that's going to be a top 10, top 15, top 20 even as somebody like a Paul George? No, I'm not saying that. However, on some nights, he can look like that guy. And when you have role players like that, if you get that out of them, which by the way, when we talk about role players thriving at home, Bridges can thrive at home or on the road. OG can thrive at home or on the road. Yeah. So it's the, they're they're like in that gray area where they're yes, they're role players, but they're a little bit more above that. And so when I say that, just saying that they are not the guys who create like Julius or or Brunson, I think it's a bit of an overstatement. I think it needs a little bit more nuance than that. And and, yeah. and look, see, if we're really gonna get down to it, we we know that OG's gonna miss some time. All right. Let's let's yeah. let's let's not fool ourselves. And if that's the case, Brunson and Randall could still get their numbers. You know what I mean? Because Bridge is going to have to be that guy at that point if there's no OG. So what we saw last season, and I know some may not like it, some may use it too much, but January was like, it was like that perfect month where we saw how well this team could thrive, right? With just OG, who didn't know anything about this team yet, didn't understand the scheme and stuff, but yet seamlessly fit in like a glove. Yeah. So with that, and we saw the scoring output, the playmaking output, I think it's all there. But the good thing is, 
as you already pointed out, we don't need to rely on these guys as much to, you know, we don't need Brunson to go out there and just go carry the team to the finish line as we saw. We, it's you don't have, I don't want to have to worry about that, and I don't think we will, especially if all these guys are healthy. Six five seven three eight three one five zero nine is the number to call, or you can hit us up on the KFTV Discord. Shout out to Jay from East New York. Go ahead and call us up, Jay. Uh, CP the franchise, Alex Rotaro. So we are rocking seventeen days away from training camp. And so to everybody watching on the simulcast, man, YouTube, Bleach Report, Facebook, and Twitter X. Okay, Al. Uh, that you know, that's a Julius segment. How about uh, Mitch? 